Why am I interested in Stephen Graham? Quite simply because Stephen Graham was interested in Russia and I've spent my life writing about Russia, studying Russia. But I think more than that, what's intrigued me is that Graham as a young man living in Edwardian London doing a boring civil service job, fell in love with an idea of Russia. Russia as a place of mystery, Russia as a place very different from the rather sort of boring world of Edwardian London. And when I was a, a young lad growing up during the Cold War, I think for me too, Russia was a place partly of menace, but also a place partly of intrigue. And I think that like Graham, I grew up with an idea of Russia and always wanted to, to visit the country, which I was able to do in my early twenties. And I lived there during the Cold War and have visited many times since. Do I think Graham understood uh, Russia before 1917? I don't think he did. He made an astonishing series of what he called tramps, huge hikes, thousands of miles across southern Russia, northern Russia, Central Asia. And sometimes he wrote very uh, striking vignettes, striking stories of the people he met and spoke to. But I think he also constructed a kind of fantasy Russia, a place of churches with golden dome architecture, which which were there, but also a place in which the peasantry was somehow deeply spiritual, had a sense of uh, a spiritual world that somehow lay behind the kind of material cover of, of the world um, which we actually see about us. I think Russia was, if you like, a, 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 almost a, a place for Graham where two worlds met, the kind of everyday world of appearances and a deeper spiritual world. And Graham, I think, was a kind of pilgrim, really. His travels were kind of pilgrim as he tried to look beyond the surface of Russia to find something deeper. Did Graham ever recover from the Russian Revolution? No, I don't think he did. He lived till 1975 and for 55 years, in a sense, I think he was trying to find again what he thought he had found in Russia, uh, a sense of a place where life was somehow lived more richly, more deeply, more fully. He travelled massively. He walked in the Rocky Mountains, in New Mexico, in New England, in America. He walked extensively in Southern Africa, hiked across Europe, um, really across the whole of Europe, East and West Europe. But he was never able to return to Russia because the Bolsheviks would uh, never have given him a permission to actually actually visit the country. And I think there's always something slightly wistful about Graham um, as he tried in the last 55 years of his life to recover what he had once had. I think writing the biography was very difficult, partly because I had to trace archives in Florida, in Texas, in New York, in London, across Europe, in modern day Serbia, in Moscow. And I think what I was trying to do was recover the private Graham. Graham was actually a very private man, even though there's something quite confessional about his books. And what I think I wanted to do was get behind the books and actually show the nature of the man himself, try to show how he was not simply a travel writer visiting museums and visiting places, but actually a man on a pilgrimage, a man trying to find the meaning of life, not necessarily in a conventionally religious sense, but really a man on a kind of spiritual quest. And I think in a way, Graham always felt that he failed to find what he was looking for because Holy Russia had closed to him in 1917. But my own sense is that actually he was on a quest that could never really be satisfied in this life. If the Russian Revolution had never happened, I suspect Graham might have fallen out of love with Russia.